The traditional way in which investors have thought about socially responsible investment is via either divestment or environmental screening. So if you think about a big fund manager or, say, university endowments, they might say, we don't like a particular activity, say carbon emissions that a company um, is doing. And so what we're going to do is either not invest or threaten to divest, sell their holdings in that company. And the hope is that by threatening to do that or by actually doing it, they will reform or change the company behavior. That's really, if you look at the evidence, not something that's been very effective. And I think it's intuitive why that might be the case, because as the university endowment, say, sells its shares in a particular company, other investors who don't care as much about carbon, who are mainly profit-driven, might simply step in and replace the funding that was lost, say, by a divestment. In the extreme case, it might seamlessly replace all the capital that the socially responsible investor is taking out of the company, and nothing changes. In my research, which is joint work with my co-author Marcus Opp at the Stockholm School of Economics, we don't look at divestment. We look at the opposite. We look at investment as a means to change company behavior. The idea is not that you sell a company's shares in order to punish them for what they're doing. It's the opposite. You reward them for adopting sustainable practices. And so what we're interested in is whether a socially responsible fund can change company behavior by giving financing at particularly attractive terms to companies that as a result choose to become more sustainable. Socially responsible investors have to think about their investments in a particular way. We call this in our research a broad mandate. What do we mean by broad mandate? Socially responsible investors have to care about, say, carbon emissions unconditionally, not just if they invest in a particular company that causes these carbon emissions. If they only look at how much carbon is emitted by the companies that we actually invest in, then actually they will not have an impact. What will happen then is they will select companies that have low carbon emissions, but those companies would have had low carbon emissions anyway, whether or not the socially responsible investors had chosen to invest in them. One of the key implications of our research is that in order to have an impact, socially responsible investors have to accept a lower financial return than normal profit-driven investors. You know, often the finance industry advertises socially responsible investing as being a win-win. You can get higher financial returns, but you can also change the world. But if it were a win-win, we would be in the situation where socially responsible investors just pick companies that are clean anyway and don't change the level of carbon emissions in the economy. And they can only change the level of carbon emissions in the economy if they're willing to accept the lower financial return. In fact, that's the way they reward companies to actually reduce their carbon emissions. Mutual funds and pension funds should have an upfront conversation with their investors about this. In the end, our research suggests that the question is how much financial return are you willing to sacrifice in order to make the world a better place? You could do something relatively similar to what a regular investor would learn, say, in their MBA course that they've taken. One of the classic investment criteria is called the profitability index, where you are asking, well, how much am I getting in terms of a payoff from the investment? How much capital do I have to commit to the investment? And you take the ratio of that. A higher profitability index means, in a way, more bang for buck. In the social responsibility area, you can do a similar thing. And we develop in our research something that we call the social profitability index. Now it's not just financial return relative to how much you've put into the investment, but it's your socially responsible payoff, meaning a payoff that internalizes the reduction in, say, carbon emissions, divided by how much capital was needed to change a particular company's behavior. And so what you can do or what you should do as a socially responsible investor is look at a set of companies, calculate the social profitability index, and then rank companies. And you start with the companies with the highest social profitability index, because those are the companies where you get the highest bang for buck in terms of your socially responsible mandate. One interesting question is, should we all become socially responsible investors? That's what you might think, right? As all investors in the economy become socially responsible, maybe that's going to lead us to the best outcome. Surprisingly, that's actually not what our research says. Our research says that you would like a mix. You want the socially responsible investors to affect company behavior, to make them more sustainable. But at the same time, you want the profit-driven capital to co-invest in a way of blended finance, as we sometimes see in practice. The socially responsible investors actually are willing to extend more of these particularly advantageous financing terms that are important to change company behavior if the profit-driven investors are also around, because they know that if they don't, 
companies will have a source of funding for potentially polluting carbon emitting activities. And so having both investors is actually ultimately in our context, a balanced capital, if you want, leads to the best outcomes.